Hi, this is Joyce from Coda with Joyce. Uh, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to learn motion layout with new Under Studio version 4.0. Okay, let's get started. Motion layout. Uh, yeah, what is motion layout? Motion layout is a subclass of the constraint layout, which means that you can treat it like a normal layout. And it is luckily backward compatible to API level 14, which means that if, you, if your user's API level is higher than 14, it is good to use. And statistically, it will cover 99.9% of the Android device out there. Yeah, it is like a transition manager plus coordinate layout. Because back then, when we were dealing with this kind of uh, animation or layout transition, we were using um, transition manager or coordinate layout, property animation framework and stuff. But by using a motion layout, we can cover all this kind of feature efficiently. And the last one is it's fully declarative, which means that you can fully describe all the transition in the XML file. But motion layout has been brought to the surface like about two years ago in Google I.O. But why now? I'm filming this. Because Android version 4.0 has been released on the stable channel, which means that it provides you a motion editor, the coolest feature that I've found so far. With this, we can visually design our transition and animation of the views so easily. And we can even see the preview of the animation as well. Like we can play it without running it on emulators. So let's try this new feature with me. We're going to make this splash. Sorry to mute the project and choose an empty activity. I'm going to set this name motion layout practice. And language is going to be Kotlin. If you don't know about Kotlin, I have a tutorial about it. So don't hesitate to learn Kotlin. So minimum SDK uh, API 23, just leave it the way it is. And loading the project. Okay, it is loaded. For someone who haven't updated their Android Studio yet, you can update your Android Studio by check for update, click it, checking for plugin updates and stuff. It will suggest you to upgrade to the 4.0 version. So if you haven't done it, do it. Yeah. And if you don't have Android Studio, you can just type in on Google and download it. Yeah, it's free. To make a splash screen, which shows nothing but the splash screen, first of all, you need to delete the action bar and this data small go to the style XML and change it to the no action bar so it will remove the action bar on the top of our screen and now we're gonna add another attribute in app them item name window full screen to true okay let's get the Twitter resource We're gonna get a white bird. And we're gonna get the Twitter logo. Download it and open it. And we're gonna use logo white on blue. If you open up your zip file, you can see a Twitter logos folder and go to the white on blue. And we're gonna this uh, vector file. We're gonna add a vector file in this. So go to the drawable folder and new vector asset local file and go to the directory where you save the logo file white on blue inside is going to be like that and next and finish so this Twitter logo has been imported in our in our drawable folder so we got this resource so let's add this blue color okay color name Name is main blue, main blue color. And go to the layout and delete all the text views and things that has been here. And go to the design and we're gonna add an image view here. Yeah, this one. Okay, make it smaller. 100 dp. No, it's too small. 160 dp. 160 dp and click this so that it automatically uh, align a bit and it is completely centered like this 
Okay, go back to the code section, and I'm gonna just set this set this background as a blue that we that we added on our Felly folder. So let's add a motion layout feature in our splash screen. Um, first, we need to add a dependency here. We need the beta version of the constraint layout, which is 2.0 beta version 6 at this moment. This is the latest one, I assume. When you're watching this video, just make it the latest version. Okay, I think it's pretty good. So let's go back to the layout folder and activity main file. And actually what we're going to do is we are going to convert this to motion layout. Convert it. So it automatically changed this constraint layout to motion layout. It made a XML folder and in the XML folder, we can see a motion scene of the main activity like this. And if we go to the code of the activity main XML file, you can see that this constraint layout has been changed to motion layout. You can find it here. And it is connected to activity main scene file in the XML folder. So it is automatically connected. Okay, let's go to the design part. Uh, when you see this kind of gray thing, I found out that it, it's gone when I just delete this and build it again. I don't know why it changed it changed the position to there. Yep. Okay, it seems good. Before we start, if we see this closely, it scaled down for one to two seconds. It rest for one second and finally it scaled up to fill the screen. So how can you make this animation? To give you a simple explanation about this motion editor, it is start constraint set and this one is end constraint set. It specifies the position and the attributes of the old views at a one point in a motion sequence. And, and if we see an XML motion scene file, we can see there is a one constraint set, which ID is start, and another one is the ID end. And you can see a transition. There is no keyframe set yet, but we're going to add it soon. So keyframe set is to specify locations and attributes for the view over the course of the motion sequence. Like for example, in the 30% of the motion sequence, I want it to be like upper side of the screen and I want the view to be red, that kind of stuff. It's like a constraint set, but it's more lighter version. So let's go back to the layout. And what we're gonna do first, you need to click this arrow. This arrow means the, like transition. So there's nothing in transition part yet, but we're going to add it soon. If you see this sequence, zero is like a zero percentage of the like sequence, and it represents a start country inside. And the 100 is exactly like a end country inside state. So it's going to be a lot easier if you understand this zero to 100 as a percentage of the motion sequence. So first of all, we want to scale down this bird a bit. We're going to click this click this timer button and we're going to add a key attribute for our image view, this bird. Position to um, 20 and attribute scale x add and click here. And I want it to be smaller, so it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, seventy percent of the original size. And let's add another attribute. And scale y is gonna be added as well. I want it to be zero point seven as well. So yeah. So let's see. Yeah, it gets smaller, right? At the twenty percent of the animation, it gets smaller. And at the end of the animation, the bird getting bigger because the original size doesn't change at the end. Okay, it rests for one second. So let's add a attribute, another attribute as well. The attribute in position 50, attribute scale X, and click here. For this amount of time, I wanted to make it steal. I want to keep the size. So scale X is going to be 1.7. Uh, 0.7 and add scale y to 
0 0.7 as well. And yeah, that's all. Let's see. Get smaller. So yeah. I'm gonna change this a bit slower. So it gets smaller and it's still. It gets smaller, it keeps still, and it gets bigger again. It gets bigger again. And at the end, 100, I want it to be really big to the point it fills the whole screen. So yeah, add a key attribute, key X, and click here, this diamond. It's hard to click. Um, scale to 50. So it's 50 times bigger than the original size. Add scale Y. Okay, 50. As well. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so this is the animation that we wanted. You can see how the animation goes without running it on emulator, which is really cool. But the thing is, how are we going to trigger this animation? It's really simple. Just click this button. You can make either click handler or sweat handler, but in this time we're gonna make click handler. So yeah. In transition and start to end, you to click is image view bird. Let's add. So it is added like that. Okay, let's run this on the on the emulator. I made it this duration to 1000 millisecond, which means one second and you can change it if you want so yeah like this and it gets bigger and if we re-click it it gets smaller and if we click it yeah you can see the animation like this so there are so many things that you can play with this motion layout because not only this kind of attribute you can actually change the like the translation x you can like rotate this like all the things that you can do with the view and actually, you can change the key position as well, which means that you can make this bird to move around. Um, this was a really, really simple tutorial to follow through. Uh, I think I'm going to post another video about motion layout in depth. So stay tuned until I post another video about this. So yeah. If you like my video, subscribe my channel and like my video. Thank you. I'm going to come back with new video as soon as possible. And thank you for watching this video. This one's Coded with Joyce. At Joyce of Coded with Joyce.